going on YouTube? Welcome to WeSibs, West Coast, East Coast siblings. Today we're talking episode 8 of Warrior Nun. We got two episodes left, guys. We're going to be doing a final series review with Jay from the Lotta Quinte Ledger. So be sure to hit subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss that. We're going to talk about the three biggest takeaways from what was a pretty good episode. Okay, guys, so biggest takeaway number one is that they discover in this episode that the bones that are under the Vatican that they suspected are not just any bones. They're yeah. not just any uh, divinium bones either. They're Adriel's bones. Yeah. He's the angel who originally had the halo and gave it to the first warrior nun. So uh, this is a big reveal, and this is likely what Michael Jillian's son was referring to when he said there's another door underground. Um, there was a little bit of confusion about that in the last episode, but this definitely clears it up. I have a bone to pick with this because here's you the thing. You have a bone to pick? <laughs> Maybe a divinium bone. <laughs> So my issue is, if these angel bones are the thing that is anchoring these demons to this world, right, how can the person who possesses those angel bones have complete control and power over the demons? So it just doesn't make any sense. How can an angel who, when he was alive, had to fight demons and didn't have control, how come when he's dead his bones offer complete control. Maybe they're saying they can use the bones the way that uh, Jillian has been trying to use the divinium. Maybe they use it as a sort of harnesser. Maybe well, they, they use the bones to make a machine to make it. But them. remember, the book says that whoever possesses the bones will be the demon lord, the lord of demon kind. Maybe they mean holding the bones. The possessor of the bones. Well, obviously, we've got point A and point B, and the explanation that they've given us hasn't connected the two, so I'm just offering a different suggestion. I think some things aren't connected in your Shut book. up! Big takeaway number two, guys, is OCS and Arctech decide to collaborate um, in an effort to get under the Vatican. Now, I figured that some somebody like Arctech would have the technology to do some mining. Again, talking to the dumb use of Ava's powers. They decide to team up and use the Arctech facilities as a uh, training ground so that Ava can practice. I thought it was an interesting plot twist to have the, you know, considered bad guy this whole time work with Ava and the rest of the OCS. You mm -hmm. always think of the big tech company as this big evil, mm -hmm. um, but there's actually just a woman there trying to save her son. Yeah, you know, everybody's everybody selfish a at yeah. the end of the day. Everybody's a hero of their own story, you know. Or selfish. Yeah, we know that. All right, biggest takeaway number three. And now, okay, guys, uh, Ava makes this big speech to the Cardinal, I believe. That she makes it to the team at Arctech at the end. Not the Cardinal. Oh, you're right. This is the, oh, you're right. Do, do you watch I'm the thinking, show? No, I'm thinking of the episode. Do you watch the, the show? Next. Ava decides that what they're going to do in order to save the world and also save all of the warrior nuns so that they don't have to deal with this heavy burden of being a warrior nun is she's going to go down there and destroy the bones just thereby destroying uh, her being the last warrior nun and also you know breaking the harness for the demons that you know are it's anchored an anchor here. breaking the anchor that harnesses the demons here anchor. shut up i think it's a little selfish honestly because <laughs> If that halo was not in her back, she would be dead. So think about all of the other warrior nuns who would get to live this super cool, exciting life that they don't get to live. Like, she's but, making this choice for everyone, mm. and it's really only been a sucky choice for her. But think about it. That's just very small-minded. If you're thinking about the big picture, if there's a way you can get rid of the demonic forces that are causing yeah. evil in the world, you would want to end that, even if it does help you and your line of, of sisters from the past and the future to have some kind of powers. I mean, my thing is, if, okay, she destroys the Divinium, she's the last warrior nun. Yeah. I almost said the last Halo nun. She's the last warrior nun. What happens when she dies? Will she ever die? There won't does be she, a need for a halo. That just means she gets to keep the halo because if it comes out of her Pretty back, much. she does. Yeah. That's a little selfish. But it's not because you're saving the world. I'm saying right. she'd be the only superpowered yes. being on the planet. Yeah, she already is the only superpowered being on the planet. Who else is superpowered besides the demons? Well, Lilith now. Lilith has got some kind of demonic forces in her, which was already revealed. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for our three biggest takeaways from episode eight of Warrior Nun. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Also, subscribe and click the bell. Be sure to subscribe, guys, so we can build this community 
as we get ready for the season finale, which we'll be reviewing with Jay from the Lotta Quinte Ledger. So definitely hit the bell so you don't miss when that comes up as well. So be sure to check out the Lotta Quinte Ledger as well for more great content. Also check out Sydney's new vlog. Um, fun employment, baby. Yeah, fun employment. It's a fun time. Also follow Fun Employment on Instagram so you can keep up with all the fun stuff we do on the daily. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.